So the last time I talked Volvos with Stefan, uh, he parts his hair differently than you, I can tell you that. <laughs> okay. And then uh, he's a motorcycle guy. Yeah. But you, you're a car guy. Yep. You got a hell of a car resume. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I've had some interesting cars. Well, let's start at the beginning. Uh, my first car in uh, out of university, or actually going to the university, was a Beetle, a 63 Beetle, a VW 1200. So not the usual 1600 everybody else gets? No, the 1200, yeah. Wow. It's a 30, what, 30 horsepower car? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, power sliding wasn't really on the option, no. except on ice. It's yeah. fantastic on ice. So this, now did you have this in Sweden? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now you spent some time in the U.S. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in two sessions, uh, my dad worked for Volvo as well in New Jersey, so we lived in uh, Washington Township in 1977, 79. Yeah. So a small child. Now that had an impact on you in your car yeah. resume. Yeah. And uh, what was the impact? Well, in the garage, we in the house we rented. Uh, the owners left uh, a Pontiac Trans Am what with year? a Firebird. I think it was a '76. Nice. Someone so it told to, me it exactly. had a screaming chicken on the hood. It is screaming chicken. That's the term. Okay. Yeah. That was that fascinated me. Yeah. I always wanted to go in that car. It was a uh, yeah. It was yeah. amazing, and it really etched inside my mind. I love that car. So what did that turn into a real car for you? Well, that was uh, uh, when I moved to the U.S. I, I um, had to have a car, obviously, and uh, being a dynamics guy, I bought a Miata. Nice. Not exactly the Pontiac. No, exactly the opposite. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that was, but it was a nice car to drive. Not very um, size-wise, I stood out. I noticed, so mm -hmm. that was uh, interesting. That you know, when you came up over the windshield, <laughs> <laughs> when you're next to a F three fifty or so, <laughs> red light. I also made a what impulse an, buy on an eBay. NA or an NB? NA ninety. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's. I still have the car. I brought it back with me to Sweden. It's a track day car now. And oh, I'd like nice. to challenge your readers if they have a more traveled Miata than I do, because we drove uh, west from Michigan to yeah. Wyoming, and we drove east, so most of the states in the northeast. And then we drove through Europe as well with a car before I turned it into a track day car. Well, I think we so need to open this up as an additional question. I think so. Yeah. Because uh, I, I've, I've, I know a lot of the flying Miata guys, mm -hmm. and they are a little crazy with how far they go. Oh, okay. Yeah. And actually, one of the people on my uh, my target Newfoundland team, they actually mm -hmm. drove their Miatas from Colorado to Newfoundland. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. we'll race them. They're, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. They might be hard to beat. I had a few other cars too uh, in the US that were more daily drivers, but uh, we wanted, to, or I wanted to, when I say we, yeah. my wife wasn't that much uh, <laughs> part of that decision. She just puts up with it. Yeah, I had. Um, uh, Cadillac Eldorado 73 Wait, that I bought on... Um... Stop. <laughs> Good Swedish kid. It's about the biggest car on the planet. Yeah. It was... Uh, I, I loved the car. It was... I parked the, the Miata and the Eldorado next to each other. It was... By the way, I mm. love... The 67, my personal favorite, because mm. that was the most perfect version of that Bill Mitchell design. Yeah. Oh my God, love that car. Okay, so you go from the Cadillac yep. to... After the Cadillac, we moved back to Sweden, so it's been Volvo since. I can imagine. So it's more uh, more normal cars. It's an yeah. uh, XC60 now. Okay. But the uh, I wanted to bring the Eldorado back home, but it was uh, it was very popular with half of of my relationship. <laughs> <laughs> the other part wasn't wasn't that intrigued. I can imagine. <laughs> okay, so here you are with a guy that has experienced everything from Pontiacs to Cadillacs to Miatas and you're running vehicle attributes for spa architecture. Yeah, the driving dynamics part. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been at Volvo? Since we moved back to Sweden in 2006. Oh, so before the sale to GLE, before this whole yeah. clean sheet thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was involved in the uh, V40 and the SNV60 as well. So I have to ask, before we get into hold the spa and going forward, what do you see as one of the biggest differences between Volvo under Ford and Volvo under GLE? Well, I think it was interesting for us because the uh, the new uh, leadership, when they came in, mm. they really made us understand what what the direction they wanted Volvo to move in. 
as I said, my dad was a uh, Volvo as well, so I've always been was part of Was he engineering of or business? En engineering as well. Oh, wow, literally the family business. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. my parents wet met when they were building the cars, on the assembling them on the line. Wait a minute. Stop. <laughs> so your mother worked for Volvo as yeah, well? Yeah, uh, she came from Denmark to Sweden to work at yeah, Volvo. Okay, do you realize every piece of bread in your life you have put in your mouth comes from Volvo? I do, I do. Yeah, so please buy the car so we can <laughs> continue to eat. <laughs> and you can feed your children. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the differences yep. between Ford ownership, Chile ownership. Yeah, the, the leadership, they were, they, for so long we've been talking about moving to premium and, and being premium and so on, but no one could really tell what, what, what that meant. You know, it's not just about making the cars more expensive, it was having a clear vision and an idea. And the new leadership really had that and they made us understand what it was that Scandinavian and Swedish, uh, that was premium. That we couldn't really understand that because we live in it and for us it's normal. But they came from the outside. We had uh, um, Peter Mertens, for instance, the R&D guy, came mm -hmm. from Germany, and, and Thomas Ingelat, the chief of design. Mm -hmm. So they, they could much clearly identify that this is what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we did. So that, that was a really interesting journey. It really made us find our own identity, I think. Okay, so I gotta ask. Now yeah. you've given me this resume of all these American cars you've had. Yeah. Are you the one responsible for the transverse uh, composite leaf spring? Yeah, back? yeah. We, we uh, I was part of the team that developed it. Yeah. Absolutely, I can't claim sole responsibility, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I can see. Well, I had an Eldorado, so I need this thing back here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. It has uh, air springs in the rear, though. So what is it? I've joked around in like eight episodes that it has this thing. Yeah. Actually, this one doesn't, but the, yeah. the, the non-air cars do. What does it specifically do yeah. for a Volvo, the, the, the composite leaf spring? First of all, it's so compact. You know, it, it's it's this wide maybe. Yeah. It's, it, since it's so compact and it runs inside the subframe, it saves a lot of space for us. So we can have a bigger electric motor for the T8, for instance. Oh, so it's a packaging thing it, more than anything else. Packaging and weight. Mm -hmm. We say we 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 save just on the springs themselves. We mm -hmm. save maybe five six kilos per car. But uh, the fact that it also has a bit of anti-roll bar effect. So when you if you move one wheel, mm -hmm. since it goes through the car. The other wheel moves a little bit as well as if you would have an anti-roll bar. As that means you can have less anti-roll bar uh, and, and save further weight. Then. Okay. So for, for the customer, it's weight savings, basically, okay. and the other effects that we have as well. Then there are secondary effects. Uh, you push, push the link arm slightly outwards, and that gives you more camber, so a little bit more grip. But it, that's small effects, I would say. These are some exotic concepts when you think about the kind of people that drive this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like the customer won't car. really, really yeah. uh, know like what about What you're talking it. Yeah. about is stuff that I would deal with in my Elise, not, mm -hmm. not a crossover. Yeah, I, mean, it, I bet it's the same with Elise, that, but except maybe when you're pushing it, it's uh, the, a bit The thing about the Elise is the, it, confidence is a great way to describe an Elise because yeah. you don't have the confidence to push beyond its limits. No. It has, it's like the Eldorado. It tells you what it's going to do yeah. because it has more confidence than you do. Except it tells you that a lot quicker than the Eldorado. <laughs> <laughs> I like the lease. It's yeah. a great car. It's a wonderful yeah. car. It's uh, a problem going to Costco with that yeah. car. Yes. I've done it. I do it a lot, but yeah. it's not ideal. Yeah. A little bit biased here. Mm -hmm. The V90 is my favorite out of all. Yeah. It is, especially with the R design wheels, man. It is yeah. killer looking. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. looking car. Yeah, I am, as you could tell, I am not a practical human being because of the car yeah. I drive. Yeah. But when I finally become a practical human being and talk some woman into actually sharing her life with me, it <laughs> will be a V90 artist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. good, good call. Yeah. Actually, a fun fact, uh, this woman that I've been seeing, I actually told her, yes, yeah, so you're going to get a Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> good for her. It didn't go so well. <laughs> she drives an Acura. That's not that exciting. No, no. That's, yeah. 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 Okay, now that's yeah. getting too personal. I <laughs> yeah. gotta ask. Yeah. Are you working with the Polestar guys, or is that something that's not your remit? There's another no, no, guy. No, we do that as well. Uh, we do um, Polestar, and it's a. They get help from from the vehicle dynamics yeah. department. Because now they're part of all. Of them. They are. Yeah. yeah. And do they do they come to you and say, I hear that you track a Miata, and that gives you some advantage? <laughs> yeah. The uh, the actual tuning is done by a guy who's uh, he's uh, not a champion yet. In, uh, in rallying, I, I, we like to tell him that, but he's... Uh, he I can see, you just told me to a lot of people. <laughs> tracking a Miata is, uh, is one thing, but rallying is another, yes. so I, he has me beat there. Okay. Yeah. Have you done any rallying? No, no, no racing in rallying. Oh, we need to get you into some rallying. Yeah. Yeah, we're putting together... Actually, we have a, we have a chump car team where we have a Miata. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we've got a Civic as well, a heater Civic. It's incredible. Yeah. Uh, we got to get you into some rally. We're trying to put together a team 
to go down to target uh, New Zealand. Oh. So I think we need to put you on. Yeah, that. I need to be in there. Yeah, and, and we'll, for you, we'll get an El Dorado. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I think we need a fun fact from you. We, we know about the Beetle. We know about the El Dorado. We yeah. know about your like secret love affair with Pontiac. Yeah. Tell me another car you had that we, we think will be surprising that the guy who runs Dynamics for Volvo had. Could it be a Chrysler Neon? <laughs> <laughs> That that was not. Wow. Maybe one. I'll try the uh, the BMW E46 3 Series then. That was a nice car. We like this guy. This is a, <laughs> we have to get you back on the show, man. Yeah, okay. Something tells me these guys want to they're going to want to get to know you a lot. Okay, there you go, Mr. E46, Mr. Eldorado. What a resume. <laughs> car wise, yeah. Yeah, it's actually more screwed up than mine, and I thought mine was screwed up. Until we see you guys next time, bis später. Thank you.